Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. In this daily editorial, I am getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group, also known as GMG, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. Now, I know a lot of our listeners have followed along as I have been providing some updates with the founder and CEO, Craig Nickel. The company has three different components to it, uh, one being the battery division, the thermal XR division, and the graphene lubricants. A lot of interest still in this battery development side of thing, Craig, and that's what we're going to be talking about because the company just came out with news earlier today. Uh, general update on the coin cell batteries and some of the improvements that we have seen through the ongoing work. First and foremost, let's just talk about this relationship with the University of Queensland. You guys have been working together to test these batteries, also to make some improvements. Give us an update now on that relationship, how you two are working together here, Craig. Yeah, thanks, Corey. Great to be on again and uh, downtown Toronto and surely New York as well. So thanks for your uh, time again. Look, uh, we've we've really come through an enormous amount of work and through working with uh, UQ at AIBN, um, we're now transferred that technology for the battery across to GMG and to our battery development centre. And we can now say that, you know, we really are now leading this this charge. And uh, the UQ team is certainly still working with us. They're looking at the next technology jumps. Um, there's still a long way to go with this uh, this battery tech. But yeah, we're we've been really happy with uh, the transfer of the technology across from UQ to us. And now. We can, we can now say we can come out with effectively a, a new energy density. We're now up 290 to 310 watt-hours per kilogram. Now, for people who don't know what that number is, that means we're kind of one and a half times where lithium batteries is. This means we'll be able to um, uh, store uh, one and a half times more charge in your battery that with this type of battery over an existing lithium battery. So one and a half times more time on your phone, for instance, now, also, we've also got this, this latest update shows we've, we've got a, a 30% or so increase in the power density. So if you thought, you know, one to five minutes was was in charging your phone in, you know, it was fast enough as per previous update. Well, now we can even charge it even faster. Uh, so our work so far has shown that um, we're now up to nine and a half thousand, so 9,350 watts per kilogram which means it's it's well and truly in that supercapacitor range, extremely fast charging. And of course, that's obviously hugely desirable uh, if you can charge your phone uh, so quickly. So yeah, two two big steps that we're coming out today, and of course, um, amongst the others. But um, And this has all come through just the working with UQ and, and building that team with the battery team here and with UQ, and we'll continue to do that. And, and we'll continue to, to optimize it both internally and also look to, for UQ in the, the next steps as well. Okay, so those were two, I think, pretty important updates within that news release. Now that the battery has energy density that is larger than a lithium-ion battery and it continues to charge faster and faster, I think the charging aspect of these batteries always was pretty quick. Are there more advancements that are going to come here, Craig, or are you guys more or less coming to a final design, a final output decision here? Yeah, so there's a few things. One is, um, you know, we're, we're definitely trying to say, well, this is where it is. We can definitely see <laughs> more opportunity. And and that is a bit of the problem is that when do you stop and when do you start just trying to uh, get into production mode? And, you know, I think it's fair to say we're, we're calling it now for the tech where we are. Um, we're now seeing you know, very high battery discharge capacity, which means it can, you know, hold an enormous amount of charge, even higher than what it was previously. But also our voltage has gone up to two volts, which is a really good number. And, you know, we can obviously join the two to get to get four volts, which is, you know, easily you can swap them out for, for a lithium-ion battery. So, you know, we're, we're seeing, we're kind of saying this is where we are now. And now we're looking at where some further engineering um, opportunities. We'll look to then be able to put this into some kind of um, FID package or final investment decision package to, to start building and or looking at building a an automated uh, coin cell uh, factory. Now, you, you, your listeners would remember we've already got one and a half million dollars Aussie um, committed towards a graphene expansion project, which is underway right now. So we're really looking at seeing what coin cell factory we could put together to put this out into some kind of 2032, which is still our 
projected kind of first product with this. Now these these batteries are obviously very fast charging and and um, you'll be able to see a, a video of us charging on on our website. But also they're they're quite safe, right? So you know there's little damage of to 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 anyone who accidentally might swallow it. <laughs> Whereas a lithium battery is, it can be quite harmful and, and potentially fatally, fatal. So there's there's some real advantages in starting out with coin cells. It shows that we can you know scale up and 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 get this product out to market and and start making batteries at, at a reasonable scale, in terms of you know millions of of coin cells a year. Now now pouch cells still out there, and that's where the, all the big uh, opportunities lie. And there's a there's still a raft of big companies that we're talking to that we're under NDA that, that that want this tech, but that's in the next stage once we've gone through the coin cell. Very similar type of process to make the coin cell to making the the pouch cell, just a bigger area that it goes across. So all in all, um, we're going to try to call it now. Although you know we can definitely see there's there's all there's some room to grow, but we're going to try to leave that for for potentially future updates. It's already better than than other batteries out there, so we think it's probably about time. So another update within that news release that we should discuss here is the uh, company. It seems like you're growing confidence in the ability to make this battery grade graphene. Now, the company does have your own process on how to make graphene from natural gas to uh, the type of graphene that you need in these batteries. We've talked a fair bit about this at different webinars. I seem to get a lot of questions asking about your guys' ability to supply what you need in terms of the graphene. What's the update today then telling us on that? Yes, yeah, so this is quite a quite an element, I think, that people you quite rightly want to understand. How do you make this nanomaterial GNG that goes into your battery to so that you know you can make this battery reliable and and that and reliably and and it being reliable too and that's a big point and even Musk said you know that that the graphene batteries have got some opportunity but just, you know no one's really worked out how to make graphene repeatedly. We've been making graphene with that process for now six years and um, after six years you know we've we've learned a thing or two and we're getting very close to saying we're we're very very comfortable being able to scale on this technology going forward. Um, We've got, uh, you know, over a year of, of, of working in this space of making graphene for batteries. You know, we're getting, um, you know, quite comfortable that um, in the in the near future that we'll be able to validate this confidence and and then with with a further investment decision around this. So, it it's it's um, it, there's a lot of good data to show that we're we're definitely moving in the right direction. You know, we certainly wouldn't be announcing this if we didn't have the data to say this. So it's it's a really big uh, point because what this means is, you know, we, we really are progressing towards a situation where we can have natural gas and aluminium coming into one shed. And in that warehouse, um, in that factory, we make a basically one of the, you know, what could be one of the world's best batteries. So and highly, highly renewable and green on many fronts. So it's it's a huge point. Uh, it, it really does progress our battery tech uh, as well as the graphene tech. We've actually tested our graphene versus other graphene from around the world from a number of different companies, and we, we've got very much an increase in confidence that our graphene is by far the best for this battery many times over, as it has a higher energy density performance than, than other graphene from around the world. Um, so we're very clear that, you know, in our mind, that our GMG graphene has, has got what it takes um, with our unique process uh, from gas. And you know that's also really exciting because we we're a complete solution in one, including the tech product and, and and process. Yeah, I think that's important to note too, right? Because I kept getting questions saying, "Can you just source this graphene from other companies?" It sounds like at least right now the focus still very much is on your process, GMG's process, and the ability to scale while still keeping the consistency. So this is an ongoing development, isn't it, Craig? Yeah, and look, we'll continue to to develop it. It's when you see the battery, it, it's it's basically you know black carbon graphene pasted onto a substrate with an aluminium foil with a separator in between. It's all about the graphene. You know, it's not just all about the graphene. It's all about the graphene. So it it is all about the consistency of making that and getting that battery can be repeatable. And we've got some good data to show that we're we're very much increasing confidence in the space. And now we've got to work out 
you know, what what are the final steps to make sure that we're really, really clear? Uh, and and obviously, we'll continue to optimize the tech. We'll continue to optimize the the graphene production um, and the whole business to 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 move towards the right type of battery application for this upfront. Because what we're really now saying is we got we could we could really be the choice of tech for pretty much every application out there on any type of market. And we've got to find the right one for our tech to for the business. This is at pouch cell, obviously, after we've done the coin cell. And so that would also help us to find exactly the repeatability that we need to, to make with our, with our batteries. Something your listeners may not know, Corey, is that pretty much every battery is tested before it's released to market by the manufacturer. And yeah, there's a failure rate of around 15, one five, 15% of every, of every lithium battery at scale. So, you know, if we, if we sit with around 15% failure rate where it's not hitting what we want um, at scale, we're actually at industry standard. Now we hope to be, you know, obviously a lot, a lot better than that, but that's kind of where the industry is at right now. There's a there's a lot of problems in you know getting you know, kind of this kind of tech produced at scale, and as a result, there's that kind of failure rate. That's just how the the manufacturing business models work. So you know we we hope to obviously be at that or, or better. Um, but once once we get a good enough data, we know where we sit, and then you know the cost base is obviously you know in our eyes lower, especially at scale uh, than lithium batteries. Then then we feel that we really can make this next step forward. So, Craig, you already alluded to it sounds like more of a final decision or a build out of a manufacturing facility for the coin cell and then moving to the pouch pack. Take us through this process, though. What needs to happen up until that point? And again, reiterate the potential timelines of when you could be moving ahead with a coin cell manufacturing facility, please. You know, it's really exciting. We, we're very exciting. We've, we've been working on this tech for some time and now to really have this tech under control in, in a lot of ways. There's still obviously some engineering to work through, but in a lot of ways, we really are getting this to kind of nearer to production rather than just out of the lab. This is, I think, in a lot of ways, what summarizes the release for us. So, you know, if we can look to do some type of FID, your final investment decision in 2023, and then to be able to put into production for coin cells in 2024, I think um, it would mean that we're really moving quite fast. That would be easily some of the fastest battery tech to market in in history. But you know, we'll we'll see how fast we can get there. Um, so it's about signing up, obviously, the customers, customer uh, distributors for the coin cells, uh, finalising the engineering, finalising any kind of uh, approval we need. Uh, both countrywide for the graphene as as well as the for the for the battery because it's a new type of battery tech. Um, it's all safer, but still you need it signed off by the government. Um, we expect that to be you know, wholeheartedly you know taken on as a as an opportunity for the government, but still because of it green credentials and and such things. But still they need to go through their you know, requirements to sign it off. So you know I think then being able to get a almost a fixed price or if not pretty close to for the building of the automation uh, automated coin cell factory and and being able to come together and bring all that together at an operating level um, in terms of costs and how we'll build the organization which we genuinely have in place uh, already with production teams for graphene and such things uh, really that's that's what we need to get to and that'll be come together for what we call our final investment decision package and as I said we'd Dearly love that to, to be in 2023, um, hopefully get in production and, and push out to 2024. Now, with the graphene production project, uh, expansion project already underway, you know, we really could see ourselves just then doing that next stage coin cell factory FID, and then we'd be able to, we think, have enough graphene from that expansion project to make the coin cells that we need uh, to make that project economic. Then once the battery development team is now kind of pushed through their uh, coin cells, they'll they'll then very quickly turn to and, and expand onto the pouch cells. And the pouch cells, as I said, they've got many, many applications, probably almost anything you could possibly think of, uh, grid, uh, phone, battery, uh, laptop, uh, uh, house, EV, um, electric uh, aviation, and many others that are 
kind of almost outside that, but lots of companies come to order to us and want us to, you know, to, to talk to them about. So we'd be very much clear to kind of make progress on that in, in next year and finalise that the pouch cell technology and get it to a into a space that makes people want to work with us further on that. Um, so that's really the next stage for the pouch cell. And then how fast that progresses is going to be a bunch of different things. But generally, it's going to be how quickly can we get the engineering around that um, working? Because the pouch cell is definitely a bit of engineering difference. And then how quickly can we get together the, the cost for the scale project? Because that would be a, a, a significantly larger, m- most likely much larger pouch cell uh, factory. So the battery development or maturation um, or process for our company over the next couple of years is, is is getting pretty clear now that we've broken the back of the science and uh, and and the graphene and you know I think it's really quite exciting to be honest it's it's really um, you know to be able to come out with almost double the energy density that we did a year ago and now above lithium ion batteries is something we didn't expect so that's an absolute bonus after getting on top of the science. All right, Craig, thank you for this update. As I mentioned on the onset, I know a lot of people are still very interested in how this battery technology is developing. I still receive a lot of questions on it. So this update was uh, nice to get an update, first of all, on the testing, the improvement, and also get a good understanding of where it could be going here in terms of getting to a full-scale manufacturing facility. So if anybody has any follow-up questions for Craig, please email me black at kereport.com in full disclosure i am a shareholder of gmg so we'll keep following along as the company keeps putting out some updates craig thank you again for your time we appreciate the update thanks Corey. always good to talk